Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Today we're going to look at signing up for online access to a social security account. There are a lot of advantages to having this access set up. For one thing, it makes signing up for Medicare a lot easier. On the downside, it can be a little tricky. There are a few gotchas built into the thing. But today I'm going to walk you through step by step, click by click, on how to get signed up for a My Social Security account online. So first of all, you want to navigate to ssa.gov. In the upper right hand corner, you see the sign in button. Go ahead and click on that. After you click there, you see a portion where we have the option to create an account with login.gov. We want to click on that. Next, you're going to click on Create an Account. After you click on Create an Account, you'll have the ability to put in your email address. Now this brings us to the first hiccup that we see people run into. It's pretty common practice for spouses to share an email address. Now if you do share an email address with your spouse, you're going to run into problems. Both in setting up this account for Social Security, as well as enrolling in Medicare. If you try to get a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare Supplement plan or a prescription drug plan, all of these different transactions will require you to have your own email address. So it's a good idea to get one set up ahead of time. It is free. You want to make sure that this is an email address that you have access to. And you shouldn't let your spouse use your email address to sign up for their social security because then when it's time for you to sign up for your social security, you won't be able to use your own email address. So sign up for an email account early and have it handy when you go into this process. Enter your email address, read and accept the login.gov rules of use, and then click submit. Once you click Submit, you'll receive a message saying that they have sent you an email to confirm your identity. So from here, you want to go to your email to check for the email that login.gov has sent you. Here's an example of what the email will look like. You want to go ahead and click on the link Confirm Email Address. Now is the time to create a password. And as you go through the process, Social Security, or login.gov to be more specific, is going to judge you. So you want to make sure to make this a strong password. It has to be at least 12 characters long. And it's no fair using phrases like ABC or 111. If you have a weak password, they will tell you. It will even say, this is a very common password if it's one that happens to be overly used. So don't, don't settle for weak. Keep going, and as you increase the complexity of your password, you'll see the little bar at the bottom. Don't settle for an average password. Be great. Today is your day. Now is when you set up your multi-factor authentication. Now, social security fraud and identity theft are big problems in the United States. This is something that is used to help combat that. So even though it might be annoying sometimes, you're going to need to set up a method to confirm it's you. I'm going to go ahead and choose text or voice message, but you can choose whichever method makes sense to you. Once you've chosen text message, you go ahead and put in your phone number, choose that you want them to send you a text message, and click on send code. Once you receive the code from login.gov, go ahead and enter it here, and then click Submit. Congratulations, you've added your phone to your account. Now, if you want to, you could add another method of multi-factor authentication as a backup by clicking Add Another Method, but I'm just gonna click Skip for now. Success, we're doing great. I'm going to go ahead and click Agree and Continue. Now you come to your first juicy terms of service. So you go ahead and read all that. 
every loving word of it, live it, love it, know it. When you're done, go ahead and click on I agree to the terms of service and click next. Some people get concerned about putting their information on the internet. But all I could say is all of this is information that the government already has on you. That's really what they're doing is just confirming your identity to make sure that you are who you say you are so they don't give somebody else access to your social security account. So go ahead and fill in all this information. It is inevitable. And then once again, put in your phone number and click next. Then you're going to get another activation code. This one is going to be longer and begin with a letter and a dash. Make sure to enter both the letter and the dash plus the code and then click submit activation code. Congratulations, you now have access to secure online services. Go ahead and click next. But wait, there's more, more general terms of service. Go ahead and read through all of it, savor every word. I'm sure you'll read every last bit of it. Click agree to the terms of service and then click next. Sometimes social security will have you verify your identity. Other times they will not. If you're one of the lucky people that gets to verify their identity, I recommend you choose your driver's license, learner's permit, or state issued ID. It seems to be the most reliable method. So go ahead and click on take a photo of one of the following and then click next. Now, if you have a smartphone, this is where it's gonna come in handy. Don't close this computer website. Keep it open here on social security. Put in your number, click on request text message. Once you receive the link on your smartphone, these next steps will be done on your phone. Make sure not to close the web browser window. This is the link that you will receive on your smartphone. Go ahead and click on the link and it will open up the application that will allow you to upload a picture of your driver's license. This is what the app will look like once you open it. Click on Let's Get Started. So I'm gonna use my driver's license, so I'm gonna choose that, which is the second option for some reason, not the first. So make sure you choose the proper one, state issued driver's license or permit. Now I'm gonna snap a photo of it, and it's pretty picky. I had to try two or three times to get it to work. So use all the tips that it gives you here. They do matter. Good light, dark surface that you're taking a picture on, all that good stuff. Click on Capture ID Photo once you're all set up and ready to go. And be prepared for the fact that you might have to do it two or three times. But it beats standing in line at Social Security. And it beats waiting a couple months for an appointment at Social Security, which tends to be the wait time. Now your phone is going to confirm that the app should have permission to have access to your camera. So when you see this pop up, click allow and congratulations. After two or three tries, probably you've actually submitted your driver's license to social security and they have verified your identification. Now you go back to the website that should still be open on your computer to complete the process. You're going to click on yes for have we finished taking photos and click continue. Congratulations, you successfully linked your login.gov account to your existing social security account. Click next. Welcome to my social security. Now we're going to go ahead and set some communication preferences. Click on set preferences. Here you have the ability to choose how you want to receive your communication, whether you want to receive only online notices, whether you would also like to receive notices via snail mail, whatever it is that you would like to choose, and you have yet another authorization agreement. Today is your lucky day. Once you have read it, you can click I have read and agree to the authorization agreement. 
Then you select your notification preferences. And congratulations, you've successfully updated your preferences and now you can finally go to the My Social Security homepage. Click on Continue to Homepage. So now that you've got your Social Security account online access set up, what can you do with it? All kinds of fun stuff. For one thing, it gives you the earliest possible access to your Medicare number once you qualify for Medicare. You can also audit your account to make sure that you qualify for Social Security. It's possible that we missed the 40 quarters we need to qualify for Social Security. So well before it's time to retire, take a look at it and make sure there aren't any corrections that need to be made. You also could have had a past employer that didn't do the right thing. So it's worth taking a look at and taking a look at early. You could also see what your expected level of income is. You're able to request Social Security card. If you've lost yours, you can get another copy. You could get a copy of your benefit verification letter and you can make sure that you qualify for Social Security. This is also going to be the same qualification for Medicare. Make sure that you have your 40 work credits that you need. Then you could also look at your retirement calculator and see what your different levels of income will be, whether you retire at 67 or whether you retire early or you delay it. So getting access to My Social Security is by far the easiest way. If you try to call Social Security, you'll be on hold for hours. If you want to make an appointment to go see Social Security in person, it will take months to get an appointment. So if you're not exactly a digital native, make sure you do this well in advance and don't wait till the last minute. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And make sure to check back in for future videos with more helpful tips on Medicare, Social Security, and all your insurance nerd needs. Thank you. Have a great day.